Move the planning board to order. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, May 19th, uh, 2015 meeting. Uh, I'd like to ask folks if you uh, would look to silencing your uh, phones and other mechanical uh, electronic devices. Um, the agenda is as follows. We'll be approving the minutes of the previous meeting of April 27th. The items of new business, uh, one is the uh, <coughs> summer oven tomorrow landscaping mixed use site plan, um, requesting site plan review of a um, application by tomorrow landscaping for a mixed use site at 541 Ocean House Road. Uh, the next item of new business uh, in by the sea, the 500 building site plan amendment, they are requesting amendments to the previous previously approved site plan um, to replace a 12 unit so-called 500 building with a new 12 unit uh, building. Uh, other business um, involves a special event facility overlay district uh, amendment to the uh, zoning uh, ordinance. And lastly, uh, if any members of the public wish to uh, make any uh, comment at the end of the meeting, there will be an opportunity for that. The public will also have an opportunity to comment on the uh, other items uh, of, of business, the applications and the uh, special event facility. So with that, uh, the first item is the minutes of the uh, previous meeting. Do the board members have any comments or questions on those minutes? Uh, being none, we'll entertain a motion to approve them as submitted. Henry, second. Uh, Victoria, in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. There's two abstentions. I'm sorry? Two abstentions. Two abstent you abstained, right? No, no, I didn't. I... Oh, he, he made the motion. I, I made the motion. Oh, I'm Wait, sorry. He wasn't here. What? Uh, that's a good point. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Henry, maybe we, we better ask for a motion from somebody who was here. Do I have a motion from somebody who was in attendance to approve? <laughs> Jonathan, uh, second. Victoria, in favor? In, uh, opposed? Abstain? We have an abstention. Okay. It carries a unanimous uh, affirmative vote, one abstention. Uh, good catch, Joe. Thank you. Two abstentions? Or one abstention. Two. Two. I, I was absent also. Ah, okay, very good. Two abstentions. Okay. I got it. Okay, all, all in favor of two abstentions. Uh, next item of business is the uh, summer oven tomorrow landscaping application. Um, the applicants are requesting site plan, <coughs> excuse me, a review of the tomorrow landscaping. 5,137 square feet in summer oven 30 seat restaurant retail 4,416 square feet mixed use site located at 539 to 541 Ocean House Road. The site had received site plan approval in 1988 and this application replaces the earlier approval. The application will be reviewed for compliance with sections 19.9 site plan regulations and site, section 19.6.5 BA district design requirements. Uh, the procedure will be as follows. The planner will provide a summary of the project within the context <coughs> of town regulations. Um, the applicant will then summarize the project. The uh, public will have a chance to comment on the issue of completeness of the application. The board will then make a determination of completeness. <coughs> um, and if it is found to be complete, then the process can continue to a public hearing this evening on the uh, merits of the application. Um, first, ask the town planner to summarize the project in the context of town regulations. Certainly. So, uh, the, as the 
Chair noted that this project has already received site plan approval, but there's been many changes on the site um, since its approval in the 80s, and the applicant has chosen to come forward with a brand new approval, kind of to leave what's in the past in the past, and, and so the board should treat this as a new site plan. Uh, the applicant is looking to make some changes to the site, and it also takes an approval dated from the 1980s and makes it much more current today, so it makes it a lot clearer what's allowed and what flexibility is allowed. So this is in the Business A district, and in the Business A district, there are design standards. Um, also, the practice is now to approve categories of use by square footage or by number of seats, and within those categories, there's some flexibility. So if you have, for example, 4,000 square feet of retail approval, you can change businesses within that 4,000 square feet, and as long as it's still retail use, it doesn't trigger a planning board review unless there are exterior changes to the building. So um, the applicant is looking for uh, approval for a specific amount of space for the landscaping business, 30-seat uh, restaurant, and also 4,416 square feet of retail. That 4,416 square feet, I included the greenhouse that's shown on the plan. I don't know if the board would like to call that some other use, but lacking any direction, that's the way I went with it. Um, and that's... I just have one other correction I wanted to make. In my memo, I talked about two inch, two and a half inch caliper trees. In fact, what I was trying to say was two to two and a half inch caliper trees, which is the standard size we usually require for new tree plantings. So it's all I have. Okay. Um, would the applicant now like to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, summarize the project? If you could uh, give your name, sir, and, and uh, affiliation. Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Johan Busman. I work with Northeast Civil Solutions in Scarborough, and we've currently um, uh, done all the site plan and engineering for this project. I'll quickly summarize a little bit from the letter. I'll paraphrase what's in our cover letter to you, and then I'll t talk more about specifics on the plan itself. Um, uh, currently, there are four businesses on the there, it's a multi-use site at the moment, um, and there are, uh, maybe I'll just explain this and then I'll look at the map, but anyway, there are four businesses on the site at the moment. Um, there's Pets Positive, Off the Wall Antiques, Something's Fishy, and Tamaro Landscaping that's currently on the site as is. Um, and what we're doing is we'd like to have a, 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 a brick oven pizza restaurant named Summer Oven, and that's really what this whole project's really about. It's really about the restaurant, but while we're doing this restaurant, we've also had to address the other issues of the site. So it's really, that, that's been the focus of the site, is the restaurant. However, in doing that, we're addressing all the other concerns, the other businesses, uh, the parking, and other issues that, that come up as far as the site plan. So the whole site will be completed as such. Um, it was an old Agway building, as, as many of you know. Um, and, and this site right now has a very commercial sort of feel to it. I mean, from our site walk, we realize there's a, a lot of paving and this and that. I don't know how you turn this back on. Maybe it just shut off on its own. Anyway, I'll, I'll let you pull uh, But anyway, um, uh, the site has a very commercial feel right now. And one of the things we like to do, and, and it's, it's in, a, in an area where you know, a lot of people see the site, so we feel what we're doing with the site, while we're not altering any new structures or something like that, we are vastly improving what is there now. So I think uh, we should keep that in mind, is that this is going to be a big change and it's going to be a real improvement to a site that a lot of people see right on Ocean House Road. Um, we've addressed uh, all the issues in your ordinance as far as the site plan layout, the driveway and parking, uh, and I'll go on more about it. Uh, waste disposal, I can go right through the list. But anyway, why don't I turn the attention to the plan itself and uh, we'll go from there. property, we have um, four buildings and two greenhouses, so we have uh, Tenwell Landscaping, which is this building, you can't quite see the building above it, it's this, uh, this uh, reddish color right here, so it's this building, this building, this building here. 
and the greenhouse right here. Uh, there's two greenhouses really on the property. There's one here and another one here. This one here will still be part of the landscaping business. And uh, there's another greenhouse here, and then you have the main structure, which is this building right here. Um, this greenhouse is, is, is going to be removed, so we're going to end just having one greenhouse right here. Um, this is the main building right here, and as you'll see, there'll be two retail spaces here, and then the summer oven restaurant will be in this front portion right here. Uh, the main thing I want to draw your attention to is this green color that you see right through here. Here, everywhere you see green right now is what is now a uh, more impervious surface that's going to be turned into lawn. So there is actually more grass that's in this section here and between these buildings and also up front here. We didn't highlight that. What we're really highlighting in green is all this pavement that's up front is going to be removed. I think it's going to make a big improvement of how you see the site. So this green here, this is right here, uh, this is all gravel, same here, same in here. That's all going to be turned into additional uh, grass and landscaping. So that's going to be a huge improvement on the site when you visually see this. Uh, what we're also proposing to do is close an entrance here. There are currently, I should say, two entrances, one here and one about right here. And what we're going to do is close this entrance here and then shift this entrance here to the right that currently exists. Uh, one of the reasons we're shifting that is to really promote a better access to the site, 90 degree uh, to the site as we've had a traffic engineer look at it and also allow for handicap parking along the side of the building um, and also a nice flow. Now there'll be a second driveway that's proposed right here and that's going to be for Nick's landscaping. And what that's going to do is separate his portion of the business back in here with the traffic here from the retail and the restaurant. So he'll have a nice flow through here out to the back in this area right over here. Um, so that's sort of the overall look of the site as we're going to change it. Um, a couple of things I'll draw to your attention is that we've ha this is a residential zone right here. And what we've done is there's a... Um, a setback from that. Uh, we've ensured that the restaurant is not within that restaurant nor um, any of the patio. At first it was designed on this left hand side for outdoor seating. We've moved that in the front. We did that for a couple reasons. Uh, one, to stay out of the setback. But two, at first we kept it here, but then we realized it would be much nicer in front to have it. And with the removal of all that pavement, it just makes a much more nicer looking site when you first approach the site. So, so there will be an outdoor patio right in here. Uh, that outdoor patio will be landscaped. It'll have a stone wall along one side of it um, and also uh, plantings over here. Um, I can go flip through the next couple. What I've done is I've loaded each of the sheets that, uh, that is part of our plan set and I can go through each of those uh, rather quickly. You want to gonna operate that? If I can. We'll, we'll tag team this here a little bit. <coughs> um, I won't spend too long on this particular one. Existing uh, this just shows a little of everything. It shows the existing features and also what's sort of proposed. It's, uh, so it's a fairly busy drawing. I uh, won't get into details, we've listed all the abutters here, um, and uh, next. Yeah, I would say really next on this. I would like to emphasize one other thing before we keep going through this project. One of the things we are looking for is uh, uh, for you to look at the completeness of this, and also we're hoping for, if all goes well, approval of this. It's our clients' uh, wish that they would actually like to start it this year. It's, it's, it's the summer oven. It's really, we're at that point in the season, and, uh, and we really are looking for that, if that's at all possible. Uh, and we think we've met all the criteria. Um, this just shows uh, soils right here. Uh, we have some contour maps here. There's, we're not changing any of the, the drainage here. Um, uh, well, 
overall, we're not changing any of the drainage here, the way the drainage is working. And so uh, currently, it, it drains a little bit to this side of the site, but also towards the front. There's sort of a line through here. What this map also represents is the different soil types. These are very good soils for drainage. Uh, they're A soil, so uh, we're, we're in luck there. And this also shows the overall boundary of the property right here. Yeah, this is, this is a site plan. Okay. Uh, what I've done here, we've, there's a couple, of through this plan set, you're going to see a couple of things that are highlighted here. And those highlighted um, are changes we've made to the plan as a result of the comments from your reviewing engineer. We felt that the comments were, there weren't too many changes that were requested, which we were really happy about. And so we've gone ahead and already incorporated all those changes into the site plan we felt that was necessary to do. Uh, there was a comment uh, back here uh, about some of the parking in an island. We've actually lost a couple parking spaces back here in this corner, uh, which was done. And there was also a question about some uh, propane tanks there in the back and their removal. Um, so we've highlighted that um, there are propane tanks which each of the greenhouses and the restaurant itself the propane tanks back here that were with the one greenhouse uh, are to be removed as they are no longer necessary. The other ones will remain. Um, the highlight down in this corner is we went from 38 to 36 spaces. We had actually extra spaces uh, designed for this uh, 30 seat restaurant. We had uh, more than that even. Uh, so we had a couple of the loose. We still have uh, plenty left over. Um, right here, we, there was a, a comment about a note, and, and this has to do with the sidewalk here in front. Uh, we have a sidewalk that's uh, stone dust. Um, that's actually a well, it's called a path instead of a sidewalk, but it's a path along the front of the property. And um, we've made a note about it that uh, we are going to be uh, doing the maintenance of that path. Um, but the maintenance, uh, as we understand it, will not include snow plow that's not uh, considered part of the maintenance. So snow plowing is not included in that, but we will maintenance the path, keep it looking nice, weed free, that type of thing. All right, so we've already uh, added that note to the plan. What's that? Um, the parking, what's that? Oh, okay. One thing I will address on here, and you can't see, I wish I could zoom in on this little section right here, is we've addressed exactly how many employees there are, and you probably can see that in your plan set better, but we actually state each of the uses, how many employees there are, uh, and how many patrons there's going to be, so that's how we came up with the tabulation for the parking. Um, so that's in this corner of the plan. So that's all that... Um, calculator and that shows on there. Unfortunately, we're not, we can't zoom up on this plan here. Um, one thing I will we'll, uh, show you over here, and it comes in the buffering back here. You'll see parking spaces back here, but those actually aren't formal parking spaces. It's something that uh, Nick will use for his landscaping business is where he parks his vehicles. It's, a, it's an overflow, so it's actually extra parking spaces. We didn't count those. We didn't need to. I suppose we could have. But, um, so these aren't official parking spaces. All the parking is going to be along in this section, here in front of the building, and also in this section right here. Uh, there, the parking back here is really going to be used for Nick, for that, for his employees. Um, and then the parking here and over here will be for the uh, retail and restaurant. Yeah, um, there's, a, there's a greenhouse right here, and there was a question that came up about parking for that. Um, there is going to be no employees for that because Nick's running that, so one of his employees is already designated to work with that building. So there is going to be no additional um, parking required for that greenhouse because that's really incorporated into his business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, this is for the uh, grading. What's that? Grading. Yeah. This is for the grading and uh, the stormwater right here. And uh, on this plan, can you? Yeah, I'm going to tweet. <laughs> See? Uh, that didn't work. Anyway, uh, this is for the grading and stormwater. As we're not changing our, our uh, the grading really on the site for the most part, uh, we're not. We're asking for a waiver for the stormwater. The reviewing engineer that has looked at this and said that he agrees with that because for the most part, none of the grading is changing in here. I mean, what we're really doing is is taking out, making the site a lot more pervious than it was before. Uh, we're taking out like. 4,000, I don't remember the numbers now, square feet of, we're taking out quite a lot of, 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 of impervious service. 45,000 square feet. 45,000? 4 to 5. 4 to 5,000, that's what I thought, 4 to 5,000 square feet. So we're actually putting in um, a lot more impervious surface, pervious surface in that area. Uh, what I've highlighted right here was there was a couple comments about drainage. Um, and that we should not let the water flow across the path right here. So we've added some inlet structures here and here, um, and, and we've already done the calculations in these, these right here, and this is a detail of those inlet yard drains. So no water will be flowing across the path. Excuse me, Johan, I, I know you have a lot of ground to cover, but we're still only in completeness, and if you have any hope of getting Sorry. both parts of this covered tonight in the time we've allotted to your application, I would ask you to pick up the pace a bit. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. All right. I didn't know how detailed you want me to get. So, all right. So, go to the next one then. You got it. Be quick about it. Uh, again, this has to deal with some of the storm water, and again, uh, the reviewing engineer asked for a check dam here and some uh, ENS kind of uh, for the storm water, so we've taken care of those issues. Uh, again, this is the detail sheet. Uh, again, addressing uh, some things we've added. We'll go on. We can almost go to the, we'll, we'll mm -hmm. go to the last plan. Yeah. Do you want to go through? Uh, again, these are uh, a couple questions that the engineer had. Uh, they were real minor as far as the size of structures and engineering concerns. We've addressed all those. So we'll just go to the last plan and then I'll... And we'll, uh, this is really the landscape plan here. Uh, again, uh, what we have here, and I would like to just spend a moment on this particular one. Um, we have the buffering that we have here um, would be along here from the original site plan that was requested right through, there's buffering through here. We've gone ahead and added um, some trees through this section right through here. Uh, uh, we've added a fence that wasn't required through this section here. Again, some more trees for landscaping. We've augmented what was already there with the abutter with some more landscaping there. On the road, you can see some landscaping. What's highlighted is we've upgraded from the one inch to your two inch requirements. And that's why those are all highlighted through here. And again, we've highlighted through here. On this section over here, uh, we have quite a bit to, to uh, block from this abutter right here. We have a fence, we have trees, and we have uh, other uh, landscaping through that section. One last thing I'll, I will add to you that uh, is from this path right here, there is a sidewalk that also connects. So we have a lot of walking facilities through this section, through the patio to the front of the building. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, before we open up to the board to uh, comments, I want to give the public uh, a chance to speak if they wish on the subject of completeness, not the merits of the application, just whether or not sufficient information has been submitted. I should also note we have a several page letter from a uh, uh, law firm representing a uh, business interest nearby. I don't know if they intend to speak tonight. Um, I will ask you to keep it brief because we have your detailed comments uh, before us. Um, would any members of the public like to be heard? Uh, if you do, if you'd come up, give your name, your address, uh, we like to keep your comments to three minutes if possible. I realize it's going to be difficult. Uh, or you're welcome to submit comments at any time in writing to the town planner and they'll be circulated. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hello, everybody. 
My name is Sandra Jones. I am a property owner at 2 Algonquin Road in Cape Elizabeth for 35 years. I am also the owner of two retail stores, Something's Fishy at 32 Exchange Street in the Old Port for 34 years, and Something's Fishy at 541 Ocean House Road, Cape Elizabeth, that we're talking about today. On May 6th, I went into the town hall and discovered that a proposal was submitted on April 30th to the town planning board showing the intended use of my leased space at 541 Ocean House for the construction and operation of a restaurant called Summer Oven. It is scheduled to open this summer. There remain several issues that need to be resolved. The summer oven slash Tamaro proposal, excuse me, is premature. Since my lease does not expire until March of 2016, my right to quiet enjoyment is in effect until then. This proposal is not complete because the plans list pet positive off the wall antiques as existing tenants and something's fishy has been admitted. I was never informed or given any notice that the proposed restaurant would be opening in my space this summer. Something's fishy is a retail store, so all my merchandise has been ordered for the summer season as an shipment or it has arrived. This proposal, as stated, is premature and incomplete. Something's Fishy has a lease until March 2016. No action should be taken at this time to enable Summer Oven Tamaro to disregard my rights. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Any other members of the public uh, would like to be heard on completeness? Uh, Councillor, do you want to speak at this point or on the merits of the application? Your letter seems to cover both. Okay. Thank you. Uh, members of the board, would you like to address comments to the applicant on the issue of completeness? Uh, Henry. I guess I have a question. When was the assuming that everything sailed through, when when were you planning on starting construction? Um, Nick Tamaro, owner of five forty one Ocean House Road and five thirty nine Ocean House Road. Um, some of the statements are true and some of the statements are incorrect. Um, we're we did notify our tenants of a potential change. We still, we have a timeline we'd like to open this summer. However, there is a lease in place with something fishy and we are in the process of negotiating a buyout so that she feels comfortable and everybody's happy. And we will follow the law to do that correctly. I'm sorry, well, it seems like that there is a completeness question that's been raised, and that is whether the applicant has right title and interest to do the project. And I actually had a question as to who the applicant is here, um, and I think it's something that can be clarified and corrected. The deed that we have been provided shows the owner as Ocean House Road, LLC, but the applicant appears here as three named individuals. So there is sort of a disconnect between what's being provided to us as evidence of ownership and who's being put forth as the applicant. Um, if the applicant does own the property, then I think the private lease dispute between the applicant and a tenant really is not our business, but I do think it's important for us to clarify that the 
party bringing the application, in fact, is the owner of the property? Yes, I am the owner of 541 Ocean House Road, LLC, which is the real estate holding company that owns the property. And so the, are, you, is that a, are you the sole? Sole owner, no partners. Okay. So I think for completeness purposes, I think we're fine. For approval purposes, we would need some confirmation of that. Sure. And, and I, I wonder whether uh, 541 Ocean House Road, LLC, should not also be named as an applicant. That might be the easier way to do that. Uh, other questions on completeness from uh, members of the board? Uh, I guess I have a question, maybe it's a follow on to the um, question by Henry and, and Elaine, and that is uh, if it's being represented that the pizza oven restaurant is going to be created, but yet a good slice of that space is, no pun intended, a good slice of that space is occupied by a retail store which has leasehold rights until 2016. I'm having a little trouble figuring out what it is we're going to decide on here on completeness if the space is not available to do with it what you want. Um, when we started the project and started the whole process, the you know, of getting, hiring Northeast Civil Solutions, the, you know, starting that whole process, we didn't have a current timeline at that time. We didn't know how long the process would take to get through the board and, and whatnot. So just recently things were going well. We were, you know, Northeast was doing a great job for us. We thought if we could make this work and we could come to a deal with something fishy to let her out of our lease, it would work for everybody. Um, I don't have any, you know, that was our intentions and we don't want to displace anybody we want somebody to leave willingly we have there are some other underlying issues um currently and so you know i don't know if we need to get into those scenarios but if we get approval there's a lot of work to be done on this site and everything has to be done before the restaurant opens and that would be our intentions if we can strike a deal with sandy and if we cannot there's still a lot of work that's got to be done in, in a time frame before we can open the restaurant. Are you saying basically that, well, I guess you're agreeing that if you can't use that space, you could go ahead and develop the property without, actual, without the pizza oven use actually coming into existence because of the uh, the something fishy uh, leasehold. Correct. We wouldn't be here tonight if we didn't have the feeling that we were close to a buyout agreement. So we wouldn't be pushing as hard as we are if we didn't think we could make it happen with our current tenants. And there's some other stuff going on inside that building too where we have to redevelop the space and shift things around. And we've gotten all the tenants to agree that are currently in the building and that's why we're pushing forward. I'm confident we'll be able to make an agreement with Sandy Jones to make her feel comfortable before we proceed. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Lane. I just have one other question and that has to do with the greenhouse that's remaining for, and I don't know, I'm wondering about the parking calculations. Is that in fact a retail space or is that part of your landscape business? It will be moved, we will use it for landscaping only. So you won't be having retail sales? There'll be no retail sales, no out front sales. It's going to be strictly for starting seedlings, shrubs, things we would use inside of our landscaping business. So does that affect our parking calculations? I guess that's a question for Maureen. Um, I I would suggest that if there's, I mean, my understanding in the past was that, that seedlings were sold to the public out of that space. And if it is now based, I mean, right now, Tamara Landscaping has three buildings on the site. And the parking that was calculated for those three buildings was, was based on number of employees. So if we just add the fourth building, it doesn't change the parking that they're proposing right now. But what it should do is in the, 
motion, I talk about 4,416 square feet of retail space. Mm -hmm. That number needs to be changed okay. to delete the um, the green the greenhouse space, so that all of this, and we would then take that number and add it to the 5,137 square feet of Tamara landscaping space. And I would think that we would want to note the plan that the, rent, the greenhouse was only to be used to Absolutely. support landscaping and no retail. Space. Absolutely. As as, it's an accessory use to Tamara landscaping. That's all it is. For you in terms of the parking, um, the restaurant, um, it's a 40 seater, but then how many parking mm -hmm. slots did you reckon would be in use for the restaurant at any given time? Considering it's also a pizza which might be takeout. So did you say? You're going to have a full 40 seat. Uh, 30. A it's a 30 seat. Right? 30. 30. I apologize. I'm upping your. I think that. So, Johan, questions as far as parking calculations? Parking calculations are based on the square foot of the restaurant. No. Seats. Excuse me. If I can be recognized. Yes. What, what they are proposing a 30 seat restaurant, and I believe you proposed four employees. So. Sorry four employees okay. so 30 seats at four at one parking space per four seats gets you eight seats plus another four seats I mean plus another four parking spaces for the four employees and that's what they proposed in their plan any more questions or comments from the board um, well we the next step down the road here is the issue of completeness to uh, determine that it's complete or not. I should also mention to the public the um, board has done a site viewing, a site visit to the premises, so we've um, seen the situation on the ground as well. Um, anybody want to voice uh, opinions about the completeness? Yes. Caroline? I'm fine. Okay. Just want a new calculation of square footage. I think I think Maureen's doing it. I think Maureen's in, in, <laughs> in the process. I am doing um, it. Well, I'll make a motion for completeness because those calculations are needed for the motion for approval. So now they're in the completeness they're room. They're in, the, in completeness room. Okay, okay. Yeah. so I, I have. So I got 7,850. Really? For Tamara. Right, I'm adding the greenhouse into that. What number did you use for the greenhouse? 2103. Okay. And then 5137 is the landscaping business. I've got 7240. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, 7240, okay, that combines those two numbers. Okay, so I would, I th going to the motion page, I think what we want to do is replace the 5137 with. Seven two yes. four zero, and replace the four four one six retail with two thousand three hundred and three. Two thousand three hundred three. Two thousand three hundred and three. Is that wrong? Two thousand three hundred thirteen. Okay, thirteen. Okay. We need at least two. We, 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 need, we need the answer twice. Is that it? No, that's what happens. Three, seven, All right. Minus mm -hmm. 21, three. Right? Victoria, before you, uh, if somebody does this motion, I, I just want to go on the record saying I'm a little bit troubled by the fact that we don't seem to have arrangements in place for the uh, brick oven restaurant to be installed. I appreciate that there's negotiations between the retail owner and, and uh, Mr. Tamara. Uh, as to completeness, so with respect to what we're dealing with, that space will either be, continue to be something fishy with a real small pizza restaurant or they'll work something out and it'll be a, a bigger pizza restaurant. So I, I, I guess I'm willing to go forward, but I'm not, I'm not thrilled about the uncertainty. I do have a question. Yes. Question for Maureen. It's a question for Maureen. 
If we approve, if this were to be approved, there's nothing to stop them from creating the summer oven in 2016. They will have their site plan approval already in Co place. Correct. And yes. And if you have um, remaining concerns, you could add a condition to the approval that the outstanding lease agreement with something fishy has to be resolved in order for the restaurant to occupy that space. But that's a given. It is, but it, if, if it makes you feel more comfortable to put it in the motion, you can. It seems to me we don't have any evidence in front of us with respect to the restaurant claim. So I would be reluctant to put as a condition here that the dispute be resolved. We really have nothing, no record evidence of that okay. issue. Uh, well, um, we have a statement of the tenant and an admission by Mr. Tomorrow. Yes, there is a lease which they're trying to sort out. Right. Yeah. I mean, we have verbal testimony from both sides that are on the same page. My point is, whether they do it in 2015 or 2016, the site plan is in place. Right. right. So their dispute is beyond our power to do anything about. And if, if we were to go through and approve this, and it sits until 2016, that's fine. No, oh, no, I agree. And within the four walls of the building, it's either going to be all piece of joint or piece of joint in retail. And it doesn't really affect us other than the seat count in the restaurant right. number of employees. So I, that's why I guess I'm. So the lease, the lease issue is really beyond our yeah. power to do anything about or anything. Right. With. Or to do. I guess my concern is it's beyond our capacity to judge whether it has or has not been resolved. Right. Um, so I, I'm reluctant to make that a condition unless we want to require someone to produce a legal opinion that it's been resolved, and I would be very reluctant to do that. Right. Okay, um, if there's no more comments or discussion, uh, entertain a motion on completeness. Somebody that can care to make it? Um, Victoria? Um, and I do, before I make that motion, I am in agreement that I do want this to be resolved in a way that everyone is happy knowing that what we're doing tonight does not mean that this is that this cannot be put off until another um maureen i would ask when when does um this expire our work the plan? the site plan would expire in one year if no other action was taken on the site to activate it Okay. So, for example, if the board granted approval tonight and shortly thereafter Mr. Tamaro started installing his driveway, that would trigger the site plan approval so that the rest of it would still, would not expire. Okay. So there is um, a one year on this. Okay. Given that, then a motion for completeness, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Nick Tamaro, Jen Feeney, and Sheldon Goldman for the site plan review of Tamaro Landscaping, 7,240 square feet, yes. summer oven 30 seat restaurant, retail 2,313. I have 713 off the site plan, but. What number should I go with here? Hang on, hang on. 2,713 is what I would recommend because that's what the parking calculation was based on. All right, 2,713 mixed use site located at 539 to 541 Ocean House Road be deemed complete. Second. Any discussion? Uh, Elaine, did you want the LLC name in that motion? Uh, do you care? If the applicant wants to add that name. I'm sorry? I'm sorry, but the, the, the deed is in the packet. The deed is in the packet, but the name of the applicant isn't there. Sure. You, uh, I will accept that. Yeah, so I had the... I'm not sure who, what, what I'd look at the actual application. What, morning. what you could do is just ask the applicant to add the LLC name to the application form. And so the resolution will recognize it also, right? It's also on. You know, the, the point I think is the application should be in the name of the record owner, the LLC. Uh, and do you want to add that into the uh, motion, Elaine? 
So reference the LLC. Or you can't do it until they have. Well, but they, they're, they're also they're agreeing to do it. Yeah. And okay. Then the motion stands because I can't make that change. So that is the motion as I read. Uh, it's I'm looking at Elaine, Elaine. if she wants to make any changes. If the uh, applicant uh, makes an, a representation to us tonight that the, as the president or head of the LLC, that the LLC is also an, an applicant, then I think we would add it. Yeah. I would think okay. you would want the name of the LLC in the approval, yeah. to be honest with you. It's currently on the plan, and I am willing to agree to, to add it to the application. So and I will put that into the motion of completeness based on Elaine's. It's not on every page of the plan. What I'm looking at here shows the owner is Nick Tamil. Okay. Well, when we get to that, it should be in the title block of the plan too, but we're not there yet. <laughs> it's noted on the plan, right? But yeah, that's no, we believe you. It's a question with the. Right, but that's not the applicant down there. So, right. anyway. No, I get right. We just need to clean that up. Okay. In an effort to try to move us forward, I, I believe what you're suggesting is in the motion where it says the application of Nick Tamaro, Jen Feeney, Sheldon Goldman, and 541 Ocean House Road, LLC. Right. Okay. Yes, and I accept that. Okay. Right. That nice motion that. as amended, is there a second? Me. Uh, Lane. Um, any discussion on the amended motion? We'll ask for a vote, please. All in favor? Uh, opposed? Carries unanimously. <clears throat> um, we will move next to the merits of the application. Um, did the applicant want to add anything further to what you've already said about the merits of the application itself? I, co I covered most of the plans real quickly. I mean, I, will, I guess it may be better if you have questions for me. I could go through that. Sure. Going through we'll, we'll have the public comment, and then the board can can yeah, uh, query you. Happy okay. To answer any questions. Uh, before we open it to the board, would any members of the public like to be heard on the merits of the application? Yes, Councillor for uh, uh, Rudy's. I realize three minutes may be tough, but if you do your best, okay? I will. Thank you. My name is Lauren Welliver, and I'm here on behalf of Rudy's of the Cape, located at 517 Ocean House Road. Um, we're here to comment tonight on the application for, uh, that we're just discussing, um, which as you know involves a 30-seat restaurant, two retail uses, and a landscaping business. Um, I've submitted a letter in advance, and I brought hard copies with me tonight in case that would be helpful for any of the board members. Are you all set? Um, before I summarize our comments, I just want to make clear a few things. Um, Rudy's is generally supportive of uh, the p potential of this project. It would certainly improve the, this visible um, site um, and be a good, um, could be potentially be a good addition to the neighborhood. Rudy's interest tonight is to see that the planning board applies the, standing, the site, play, uh, site plan and design requirements consistently within the BA zone and that like applicants are treated similarly. As you are aware, Rudy's recently went through the same process and its application was required to meet these very same standards that we're considering tonight. As a result, Rudy's invested significant time and resources to ensure that its restaurant was compatible with this zone. The process was thorough and long, but it did result in a high quality establishment. And we have no doubt that an established business like Flatbread Pizza, this would be its 13th franchise, has the financial resources to do this project right. Flatbread can and should give this community the caliber of restaurant that it deserves. In brief, and as detailed in my letter, um, the application is not ready for approval tonight for the following reasons. First, as we just discovered tonight, there's a lease dispute. I believe that that should be um, resolved and reported to the board the terms of its resolution before we review anything further with the site plan. 
There was also no letter from the Portland Water District regarding its ability to supply water for all the uses contemplated for this property. As you know, the letter that it was submitted speaks to um, its ability only to serve a 30-seat takeout restaurant. Applicants have failed to demonstrate how the existing exterior lighting will be adequate with the many new features of the site plan. As you know, there's a new parking lots, new driveways, and the site would now be used at nighttime. A photometric study should be required to ensure that the site plan is safe and meets the applicable lighting standards. Applicants have also failed to meet many of the BA zone landscaping design requirements, including failing to provide landscaping that will obstruct the view of parked cars in the, in the, uh, from the sidewalk. Um, applicants have also failed to provide a concrete or asphalt sidewalk from the restaurant to the street. Use of stone dust is not allowed, is not compatible with the Ocean House Road neighborhood, and may present issues with ADA compliance and maintenance. The, um, with regard to the parking uh, calculations, it's not clear from the materials whether the 30, site, uh, the 30 seat restaurant includes seating in the patio area. The, um, the applicant should be required to clarify that, and if it does um, add addi additional seats to the 30, then parking and any other um, requirements that are geared towards seats should be revised accordingly. In sum, the application as submitted is not compliant with the town's land use standards, is not ready for approval at this time. Applicants should revise their application to address these shortcomings and resubmit a revised site plan application which will allow the planning board an opportunity to review a complete package for this site plan rather than approving the site plan in parts. As I indicated in my opening remarks, the planning board was vigilant in its assuring that Rudy's met these standards as it did with Rudy's, the board's consistency in applying these standards will ensure that the town gets the high quality establishment that it deserves and Flatboard, Flatbread has the resources to do this right. For these reasons, we believe it's not time to approve this application. Thank you. Would any other members of the public like to be heard on the uh, merits of the application? Uh, that not, I'll uh, close the public portion of this uh, application and open it up to the members of the board to ask questions or discuss among ourselves. Any questions? Um, uh, Henry. So I noticed in the letter that was sent to us about the water supply, there was a question raised about washing dishes. And I noticed in the letter that was originally proposed was that you were going to use paper plates. I know this is a bit mundane, but paper plates. Um, okay, I can I can address a few of her concerns. Uh, first, I'd like to say about flatbreads. It's not has no association with flatbreads, so just as a clarification on that. Um, anyway, um, as far as the water goes, uh, we originally got that the letter from the water department a year ago when we were here before. When we ask them to upgrade that letter, you know, it takes uh, quite a bit of time for them to do it. They don't return calls real quickly or emails. So uh, luckily Rick got a hold of them and said, can you make this change? And they did so fairly quickly and just updated the letter. They, they didn't really detail out the letter because of the change you're right from the paper plates and this thing. Um, there's plenty of water, there's a fire hydrant right in front and there's plenty of water there. So we've already emailed and called uh, Portland Water District for an updated letter that would actually specifically address those concerns that you have. We just haven't heard back from them, but we're, so it'll take a little bit. I noticed that there is a proposal in the water letter that to reduce the pressure because it would be too high for your use. They recommended re reducing the pressure, a local re pressure reducer, where you used it. I don't know anything about that. Good. So then there, my assumption was that there's plenty of water supply regardless of whether it's paper. I just wanted you to state whether it was, you know, you, you'd done the research on it. That was all in, in answer to Correct. the question. Correct. So, so but this will be a sit-down restaurant with, with, you know, not paper plates but formal, you know, uh, plates and things like that. That's fine. That, that answers the, 
that answers that point on the, the letter as far as I'm concerned anyway. Rick Bacon, PE, NCS. Um, if you dig a little further into that letter, I think on the last page she says it, any additional water use can be handled by an inch and a half or two inch line. We don't anticipate a problem. Please ask us in the future if we can be of any more service. So I thought that may have covered it, but when I read through the letter and noticed the same thing you did, that we still had paper service from previous that's when I tried to get a letter. So I'm about two weeks out on that letter. I can expect it in two more weeks. They're running about a month behind at Portland Water District. But I would have expected if you to put in a pressure reducer that there was ample water supply. Yeah, and there'll, there'll be a pressure reducer, or yeah, he'll be blowing the faucets on us. And I guess there's just one quick follow-up then while I'm at it, if you don't mind. Is, is you taking away one greenhouse and adding saplings, or what you call it, does that increase or decrease the amount of water supply on in 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 the property, or would it be uh, net gain or net loss or just e equal? It would decrease. Uh, currently, there's seed le regular flowers, pansies, and that sort of thing being grown. They have to be watered twice a day. The stuff that we're going to do will be in the ground, not on tables, and it will be uh, through drip irrigation. So it will cut the water usage. Way down. Thank you. I have a question about the landscaping in front of Long Route 77. Are some of the trees that you're showing as your landscaping also in the town right of way? If the path is in the right of way, it looks like some of those trees are also in the town right of way. Is that correct? Yeah, the four street trees. Can we bring up that site plan? I'm sorry? Oh, sorry. I'm going to bring up the site plan real quick. Uh, you need a password. ACP. I don't know. ACP. ACP? Yep. Yes. Yeah, yes. You can, I just go to the cover last one. Last one. Okay. 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 Um, the last sheet uh, in the plan set is the landscaping plan. And you can see the right of the line, this line right here. Right. So uh, this would all be in the public line if that's correct. So um, who's planting them and who's obligated to maintain them? Uh, it would be the, the property, it would be applicant. Is obligated to maintain them? To plant them. Plant them. I'm but sorry? To plant the trees, yes. But, but if there's a problem with, I know that there had been a request that a note be added that the town is not obligated to maintain the path, which raised for me the question is, okay, there's something else that's in the town of right of, uh, town right of way, and that's the trees. So do we need to affirmatively say that the applicant would be required to maintain both the path and the trees, and that the town has agreed that they're going to be there. Yeah, right. So the, the town center district and now the VA district has design standards that no other zoning district has. Right. And those districts actually talk about having sidewalks or paths between the, the business and the road to create a grass strip between the road and the sidewalk and to put things like trees and lighting in that grass strip. The reason the request has been put in to not be responsible for maintaining the path is because it's a stone dust path. And Public Works doesn't want to be responsible for something that's not paved. The trees, on the other hand, are very typical of what we see everywhere else. I will be honest with you, since these trees are planted in front of a landscaping business, I'm sure the town would be very appreciative if the landscaper would take responsibility for maintaining those trees. But they are in the right of way, and I can tell you that the Public Works Department right now takes care of the trees that are part planted in the Esplanade in the town center. So is it typical, maybe I'm just not remembering this, in the BA district, that the required 
landscaping is not on the applicant's property. It's absolutely required that it be in that grass strip between the sidewalk and the street. So and is that always the town right of way? That's almost always the town right of way. Sometimes we've actually had some of the sidewalk or the path veer onto private property. We've asked the property owners to give us what we call a public access easement, which is what was the case with the sea salt market, and they provided that. So what we're trying to do is create a very pedestrian friendly environment between the edge of the road and the business. And we've said that that includes a pedestrian facility like a sidewalk or a path to have it separated from the road, to put some trees between the path of the sidewalk and the road. And this proposal is consistent with what we've been seeing for new proposals in the business districts. Okay. I just had forgotten that it was always in the town right of life. Uh, Jonathan. Could the applicant or representative of the applicant? I noticed that on a couple of these site plans, there are some referrals to lights um, that look to be exterior lights. Um, can you just address the, the concern from the public with regards to uh, whether or not there's going to be adequate exterior lights? Yep. Um, all right. I, which plan is that? Do you remember which plan that's on? I can see them on my copy. They might be a little bit tough. To okay. Well, I, I know it's sort of by heart. Uh, I can actually put, let's just go to that cover page. I was going to say, Sorry. if this helps. How do, you, how do you close this? X red. I'll just go to the cover page. Oh, here we go. No, no, no. You want to go to page three. I was going to just go to page one because it's kind of full. Okay. Sorry for taking time to learn Mac. Uh, okay, there is exterior lighting. It doesn't show up this particular mm -hmm. site, but it's a highlight man, so I know because I did go out there and look at it and locate all the lighting. Um, there's currently uh, overhead light on this particular uh, working light here, and something that would look like a street light, and a few major lights. Um, we have also lighting on um, this particular building here, shining up this way, there's lighting here. On this one. Why we feel it's adequate is because there's already parking here in front of the building. So uh, we're actually reducing the size of the parking here. So there's ground parking here and there's parking over here. So we already have uh, lighting for the parking. There's also lighting on this particular building here, on this face here, at this corner here, and in front of the entrance right here. So there's at least four or five places where there is lighting. And we're not actually creating a space where there's, say, on the back side of the building where there's no light. So um, we're modifying parking lots where there's already lighting out there. So we didn't feel it was necessary to add any more light to that reason. I should point out the applicant has requested a waiver or the requirement that there be a photometric study. And Maureen, could you uh, speak to that? Sure. Um, you know, the, the, the site plan standards do say that the planning board needs to make sure that there's adequate lighting on the site. But in practice, um, you've always treated less lighting as better lighting because there's always been a lot more concern about light wash off the property than inadequate light on the property. And because the applicant isn't proposing any additional lighting, uh, that's usually when you get a photometric study um, the review isn't of how much lighting is on the interior of the site. The review is to make sure there isn't 0.5 foot candles or greater lighting going off the site. And because the applicant isn't adding any more lighting, that was their reason for saying we don't need a photometric study. Because the lighting they put in is before we were doing this site plan review. Thank you. Um, follow up question on the light. Oh, sorry. Sure. Um, what is the tallest? How tall is the lighting that you have in the back? You mentioned. Uh, well, it's, it's connected to this building. It's oh, it's connected to the building? Okay. At Rudy's, there was a number of uh, 14, 16. I mean, they were really tall. So you don't, they're not. No, no. How tall this are is they? a one story building here. It, so it's 10 that, feet? It, it's, uh, it's not even maybe, at the top. Okay. Maybe 10 feet. Maybe All right. Because I agree with Maureen. We're always concerned about lighting going <coughs> off of the property. That's why we have the photometric. The photometric is to see that it's not coming off. So 
I'm satisfied that with the lighting that it's, you don't have it as tall, you don't have it as close to the road. No. I, I'm, I feel comfortable that it's not. Yeah, there's nothing shining on the neighbors or anything like that. There's no change right. right yeah. at this point. Okay, I agree. Uh, Henry. Yeah, just going quickly about lighting. What, what hours of operation do you propose for the summer uh, oven in? I assume it's all year round or is it just summer? <laughs> it's year round. It's a year round. So, so what hours do you propose? So in the winter it will be dark when you close. So is there any additional lighting for the parking area? The parking area is lit now because there's been lighting. Yep, there is already lighting on the parking lot that's shining on this building. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry. So there's, part, there's lighting on, on this existing building in like about three places that's pointing out this way and there's lighting on this building that's pointing out to this so it, it, it It's going to be adequate. People coming out of the car are going to trip over a tree so or I take them that. Uh, there's another point was raised uh, about the surface of the path itself, um, the stone dust versus something else. And Maureen, would you also uh, give us yes. some comment on precedent? Sure. Uh, this application came before the board a year ago. And in workshop, uh, the applicant discussed putting in a stone dust path. I uh, came to the first meeting, and it was deemed incomplete, like issues that. totally unrelated right. to the sidewalk path. Um, in this section of the BA district, it explicitly says path, not sidewalk. The intent was for this to be more casual. Um, it does not say in the landscaping and site development section what the surface treatment has to be. Um, and I'm looking for a sidewalk and other pedestrian pathways, such as to the building and two parking areas, shall be located between the road and the structure. Uh, the side of the structure facing the front yard shall be designated. Um, there, is a, there is an illustration on page 114, which is designated for the Ocean House Road section of the BA district that shows a meandering pathway. And there is a label that says asphalt to concrete. These illustrations. Right. It's, it's asphalt or concrete for the walkway going from the pathway into the property. There is no designation of what the pathway should be. And further, I, I think we would have a hard time uh, holding people to the, the labeling in these illustrations. The illustrations were intended to give people an idea of what was required. And if we were going to require specifically a specific surface, it would have had to have been in the text yeah. of the ordinance. Even in the town center district, where we have pretty strict sidewalk requirements, we do not require a specific sidewalk treatment. So in some portions of the town center, um, we have concrete. and others, we've had asphalt. In the BA district on Shore Road, we've actually had a brick sidewalk installed. Um, so, and this area of the VA district was specifically designed, described as a relaxed beach seaside area. So I would say that the board needs to make a determination about whether they feel that a stone dust path meets the requirements of a beach seaside area. And if you decide that, it, that a stone dust path doesn't, then you should require something else. And if you think that this does meet the minimum standard, I don't see anything in the ordinance that says it has to be concrete or asphalt. And I might add, the, um, a while back, the good table was in uh, with an application, and that particular type of path was discussed. And they, they pointed out that a paved si a sidewalk was really out of keeping with the neighborhood. And I think the board agreed at that time. And, suggested that a, a gravel, stone dust, or what have you, informal uh, would be, path would be more compatible uh, with the neighborhood and yet satisfying the requirements. So this isn't a, totally a, a matter of first impression. Uh, Victoria. 
Well, I would like to point out to the board that actually in the letter that we received um, just a few hours ago on uh, the last page, no, page six, seven pages, actually what the applicant is, uh, excuse me, what um, the representative of uh, Rudy's is saying, there's a failure to provide a concrete or asphalt sidewalk from the restaurant to the street. So they're not commenting on the uh, pathway. They're saying from the restaurant to the street. So their comment is on the pathway from the restaurant to the street. But it's there. So they're not commenting on. But there is a pathway. But they're not commenting on that. But the board wants to consider that, as Maureen has pointed out. But I also want to point back to the letter that we receive. It's very clear. Their concern is they don't provide concrete or asphalt from the restaurant to the street. So. And again, I would point out that I think it would be difficult to hold people to standards that are labels in the illustrations. I think where the standards are written in the text, um, we should vigorously apply those standards. And I would say that, it, it, I will be honest, it is my hope that as the applicant maintains this stone dust path year after year after year, that he may in the future decide that a paved path would be a more prudent route. If, if I could comment on one thing. One, this will be yeah, that's correct, but yeah, so this path right here that's in yellow uh, is stone dust. However, for ADA purposes, this one right here, this will be brick pavers. So we do have brick pavers from the restaurant all the way to the parking lot, to the handicap, and basically access to the street. Actually, <laughs> brought a paver with me. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from the board? Uh, Victoria. Um, there was also in that same letter um, about landscaping, and there was a concern about um, screening um, in the back of the lot. And I just want to point out that when uh, Golden Ridge came before us as a subdivision, they are required to provide buffering. So this letter is asking us to buffer the buffer. And uh, my personal view on that is I think there's adequate buffering in the backside because it, it is a buffer. And I'd rather not, um, I, I think it's a little excessive to buffer a buffer as far as that goes. And there is, um, if the landscaping is still up there, there is landscaping. There are fencing, there are plantings. It's certainly not the heavy residential. The Chapmans are the residential. I forget the name of this owner. That's the BA district, and I forget the name of that owner. My apologies, that's the BA district. Uh, buffering for the BA district to another BA district, of course, is not the standard as it would be to a residential. So we're really looking at the Chapmans. It's not a whole neighborhood as it was when we were looking at Rudy's. It wasn't just one neighbor, it was a neighborhood. So as far as the buffering to the Chapmans goes, um, I do see that there is the evergreens, and they're already, the evergreens have already taken off. Um, I'm not sure of the height, Nick could probably uh, speak to that, but they've already taken off, so there already is a buffer to the Chapmans. But if anyone from the board thinks there should be more buffering for the Chapmans, I mean, that's for the rest of the board. But as far as the lands, the buffering goes, I'm satisfied with the buffering for the BA districts and to the subdivisions buffer. <coughs> in the back. Yeah, and I think that, I believe the Chapmans feel they're, they're, uh, they're fine with the buffering that's required that he put in as part of the original site plan, which would be that row of, uh, of uh, evergreens back in here. Can I ask a clarifying question? Where Golden Ridge subdivision abuts this property, is Golden Ridge itself in the BA part of that lot? Is that the residential? Just, okay, because there was something in one of the comments that said... Actually, let me confirm that. There was something that said that the building envelope on that Golden Ridge lot was not in the BA portion of the Golden Ridge lot, which led me to think that maybe that lot itself is split by the zoning law. Right. right. I, I'm the one that wrote that, and no, um, yes, the back line is abutting, 
is, is abutting that residential area, but that, that back line is abutting the Golden Ridge subdivision. And the lot that that line abuts, the building envelope is way far away from that lot line. Um, that side of the lot line is all buffer because it goes into wetland. Is it entirely in the RA? Is that entire lot in the RA district? The entire lot is in the RA district. Okay. Yes. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I would just miss. I just misread what what was in the mem What was in the memo? Yeah, and <coughs> yeah I, I would add from the just the value of the site walk that that whole back area is densely wooded, and it is the buffer to Golden Ridge. I agree with Victoria that to buffer on a buffer would be really rather pointless in the back part of uh, the Tamaro lot is the existing landscaping business which will stay there and it's actually being more visually screened from the street so the the view from the street uh, will be enhanced tremendously by the proposal and the I think people know the property it's kind of beat up and the front is, is not the have it doesn't have the greatest appearance in the world and I think the landscaping plan as it's been presented is going to um, greatly uh, improve the uh, the looks of that property from the uh, from the street. I'm sorry, sir. The public comment period is is closed. Well, I'm I'm sorry, sir. We yep. <laughs> uh, do we have any other comments, questions, or items of discussion from the board, Victoria? Uh, I just want to one last. Um item that was brought to us by Rudy's uh, failure to address the design guidelines. I went through the seven pages and I'm not exactly sure which design guidelines that this is not compatible with. Um, and so unless anyone else on the board, uh, it seems the design guidelines, it's compatible. Um, I vigorously tried to oppose steel siding and I failed. <laughs> And so the rest of the board says steel siding is compatible, which Rudy's was very pleased to find out steel siding is compatible. I would say at least yours is going to be painted and will not rust away as my argument was, and though I did fail in that argument, I at least say a bravo for painting it and protecting it because I do not feel the court and, and I won't go down that path again. <laughs> but as far as, I mean, I'm surprised that they would actually put in this letter that you did not address design guidelines. Mm. I, I, when, I, I, Victoria, I, pardon me, if we have no specific design issues to address, I think we should move on. Um, I've already moved on. <laughs> I think you've addressed the design guidelines. Thank you, for Jonathan. I just have one. Um, there was a concern that was brought up about the parking, and I just wanted to point out that um, the new proposal from the applicant does actually get rid of one of the entrances and a, a very large area of pavement in front, which I think would make it more pleasing aesthetically when driving down Route 77. Um, looking at that building, so I, I, yeah, and then also there, I don't believe there is an expansion of the parking lot. The parking lot, as it exists, um, is going to continue to be used. And so I, I um, applaud them for for taking away pavement and bringing back grass. I think that's going to make it um, the building as much as some of us miss the, the old Agway. <laughs> um, I think it will make it a, a nice uh, addition to that area of town. Okay, if there oh, Elaine, sorry. Um, just on the design guidelines point, we have been provided with drawings of the new window openings and doors and what's changing and what's staying the same. So we have looked at the facade to determine that the that is consistent with what we're looking for in that district. And so I think we have a basis for concluding that that is the case. If there's no I have, I have a question for Maureen. Um, on the lighting, it strikes me that when they do this, they're going to get halfway through construction and realize they want to do a substantial upgrade on the lighting. At that time, they would be required to submit a photometric study and fixture cuts and all the... If I'm asked by the code officer, I will strenuously recommend, strenuously recommend that no lighting be added that isn't already shown on the plan without amending the plan and bringing it back to the planning board. 
The only thing I would put as an exception to that is I think some folks have used what I call the Christmas tree lights, and it is the code enforcement officer's feeling that those are, you know, decorations and we don't regulate those. Any further discussions? If there are none, the I, we can. Sorry. Oh, Caroline, sorry. There's one co one comment we haven't addressed, and that's the 30 seats, and the fact that makes make it very clear that if this is approved as a 30 seat restaurant, that includes the patio. So if you have people seated on the patio, your interior seating must be reduced. So just to make that really clear, that that's understood. So. 30 seats is 30 seats. Yeah, no, 30 seats is understood. We actually do have extra parking, but if we do go beyond, as designed, but if we do go beyond the 30 seats, that would be extra. No, that includes any uh, seating that's outdoors. Right. If you go beyond 30 seats, you need to come back here and yes. talk to us. That's correct. Okay. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's correct. I'll entertain a motion uh, by any board member who would like to make one regarding approval. I'll Go. do it. Um, motion for approval. <clears throat> Finding of fact. Fact. Nick Tamro, Jen Feeney, Sheldon Golden, and 541 Ocean House Road, LLC are requesting site plan approval of the tam Tamaro landscape landscaping 7,240 square feet summer oven 30 seat restaurant retail 2,713 square feet mixed use site located at 539 through 541 Ocean House Road which requires review under section 199 site plan regulations several two Several revisions to the submitted plans are needed to bring them into compliance with the site plan and BA district design requirements. Three, with the revisions described in the conditions of approval, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Nick Tamaro, Jen Feeney, and Sheldon Goldman 541 Ocean House Road, LLC, for site plan review of the Tamaro Landscaping Summer Oven 30 Seat Restaurant, I'm sorry, 7,240 square foot Summer Oven 30 Seat Restaurant, retail, 2,713 square foot mixed use site, located at 539 through 541 Ocean House Road, be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised as described in paragraph 4, 5, and 6 of the town engineer's letter dated May 12, 2015. Two, that the parking calculation be revised to include the greenhouse and adequate parking for all proposed uses on the site provided. Three, that the applicant provide a letter from the Portland Water District confirming that, the ad that adequate water will be available for all proposed uses on the site and that any necessary upgrade to water lines be installed. Four, that the west side of the dumpster be screened. Five, that the proposed maple trees be a minimum of two to two and a half inch in caliper at time of planting. Six, that there be no alteration of the site nor issuance of a building permit until the plans are revised to satisfy the above conditions and submitted to the town planner. Seven, that prior to any alterations of the site, performance guarantee be posted for the proposed improvements, the amount of which is reviewed by the town engineer, the form of which is reviewed by the town attorney and all subject to the approval of the town manager. Second. Uh, um, we, we have a motion <laughs> seconded. Any discussion on the second motion, Victoria? Yeah, discussion. Did, did we want to add 541 Ocean House LLC on the uh, block on the side on the um, um, yes yes okay um, so a proposed condition would be that uh, yes I'd like to um, that the um, 541 Ocean House Street LLC um, appear on each of the plats 
I would, I would also like to propose a revision, and that is number two is the parking Excuse calculation of the greenhouse is obsolete, so right. it should be removed. So can I make a suggestion? Yes. So just to keep, just for parliamentary rules, there's a, a condition about the adding 541 Ocean House Road LLC. That can be a friendly amendment if the person who made the motion and the person who seconded the motion accept it. Yes. Yes. Okay, so that's now part of the motion. And then there is a second recommendation that removed. item number two, the condition number two be, be removed. removed. Right. And that can be removed if it's a friendly amendment accepted by the person who made the motion and seconded. Yes. I'm yeah. going section three. Wasn't that already addressed by the, by the water board? No. No, that's, there's a letter yet to come. I thought there was a letter already in the, in the there, package. There is a letter know. in the package, but it, it needs to be updated. Perfect. Okay, so we have a motion. Uh, it's been. I have, I have a question as to what number you want that I forty. Your block. Would that be number seven? Can you make it new? Oh wait, would we be could two. make it a new two. number two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you're going to change the other numbers, or just omit two? Oh, we're we'll just going to add the new plug this new thing requirement two in two. place of the greenhouse uh, condition. Okay, we have a motion. It's been seconded. We've had two friendly amendments which have been consented to by the mover and seconders. Um, I'll call for a vote on the um, amended uh, and seconded motion. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Well, thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it, and we think this will really enhance the site. So I think it's a real bonus to the town of Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I apologize to the uh, next uh, people who are here for the next items on the agenda. We have run longer than we'd hoped, but there was a lot to talk about. The next item. Uh, is the Inn by the Sea um, on its requesting a uh, amendment to the site plan to do a reconstruction on the uh, so-called 500 building. Uh, excuse me, Nick, uh, could you guys move off to the back? We've, we're trying to keep the meeting going here. Are you folks from the end uh, ready to go? Okay. Uh, next uh, item, uh, in by the CLLC is requesting site plan approval for the replacement of the 12-unit uh, 500 building with a new 12-unit building located at 40, <coughs> pardon me, 40 Bowery Beach Road. Uh, application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19-9 of the site plan regulations. Procedure will be as follows. The town planner will introduce the project in the context of town regulations. The applicant will make its presentation about the project. Um, there will be an opportunity for public comment. Uh, the board will then consider the issue of completeness. Um, the board will then consider whether or not a site viewing would be uh, appropriate or scheduling a public hearing later. And we would uh, also um, discuss anything else that the applicant would like to talk about at the, the next meeting where this is considered. Um, Maureen, would you kick this off with your summary? Sure. So this is in the Business B district. Um, I want to correct a, mem a typo in the first line of my memo. This is a 12-unit building being replaced with another 12-unit building. Uh, the complication on this site is that uh, it's within 250 feet of a resource protection on wetland. It's also within 250 feet of a shoreland zone. And uh, for those of you who were here when we rewrote the normal high water line, the applicant is using the new 
modified normal high water line, which is the highest astronomical tide, plus three feet. So those lines go approximately halfway through the building, and the applicant has been very, very diligent in calculating the amount of square footage and volume that they have right now, and calculating the square footage and volume of the proposed building in order to make sure that they don't go over what they're allowed because they are what we would call legal conforming, legal non-conforming structures. They have been working with the code enforcement officer. He has asked for a little more detail, but at this point he is he's comfortable that what's being proposed is compliant with our current restrictions on what can happen in those non-conforming areas. Uh, thank you. Uh, <coughs> Pardon me, would the applicant like to present the project, please? Good evening. My name is Mike Zimmerman with the Olympia Companies, representing the owner. I'm accompanied by Eric Doobie from Casco Bay Engineering, Richard Lowe from Kaplan Thompson Architects, and Jesse Thompson from Kaplan Thompson Architects. I want to thank the board very much for taking the time to consider our application. Um, I'm going to briefly just give you some context uh, for the site. I'm a PC guy, so you have to you know, forgive me on the Mac here. Yeah, arrows are slow. I'm impatient. There we go. Um, I just wanted to, for people who don't know the site, give you a little bit of context uh, on the site. And I believe we have a fancy pointer here as well. Um, this is the in by the sea parcel, and this orange dashed area that I'm highlighting now is the so-called 500 building. And it's called that not because it's 500 years old, but because the unit numbers begin with the five prefix, 501 through to 512. Um, the building in question, which is in the middle of our site, uh, is, is really a significant part of the site um, because it, it bridges what we call the main inn and the 600 building, or as we call it now, the Oceanside Cottages. Um, and it, it forms a link between these two buildings and the different architecture we see in this two, these two buildings. The building is 30 years old. It's in very poor condition despite the regular maintenance that it gets. It's, it's predominantly used in the summer um, and, and closed up for the winter, although the main, is, main inn is maintained during, during the um, winter months. The problem with the building is that it really fails to meet our guest expectations. It's out of sync and out of step with the rest of the inn, which is newly renovated. Um, it doesn't have any king beds in it. The bathrooms are dated. Um, it has interior staircases that are difficult to people, for people to move around in. And it generates a significant amount of guest complaints and, in fact, uh, a large amount of refunds that we have to give to guests uh, when they arrive and stay in these units, especially if they've stayed in other units within the inn. As, as Maureen said uh, at the beginning of her speech, the, we're proposing taking 12 guest rooms and replacing them with 12 guest rooms. So the room count isn't changing. We're bringing this building up to the standard of the rest of the inn, which has become a leader in upscale hospitality in, in, in southern Maine and, in, and indeed in all of New England. The, um, schedule for this project is we are looking to um, break ground in uh, Columbus Day of this year and be open for Memorial Day of next year, which is a very tight schedule considering the amount of work we have to do. Um, and, and it's aggressive for the team, but we feel we, feel we can achieve it. I'm going to pass you on for more details to uh, Eric Doobie, who's going to talk about uh, the site design. Thank you, Mike. So my name is Eric Duby, Casco Bay Engineering. I'm the civil engineer for the project. And um, the impact for civil is actually fairly minimal, so I'm going to go through this um, pretty quickly. We have the um, basically the Shoreland Performance Overlay District line that we're dealing with here. So you can see the gray shaded areas, and this is what we took our impervious. Um, numbers that you see in front of you. The overall net reduction that we have is 393 square feet. Um, so that gets us uh, basically reduced it by about a half a percent um, from the existing conditions. 
these are the existing buildings that are there now, which is the 500 buildings, and then we have the existing parking area adjacent to, which serves essentially the 500 and 600 building. And of course, we had to take a small portion of uh, the existing uh, main building and a little bit of parking area, and of course, the pathways and, and walkways and such. The proposed site, you'll see, the buildings are similar in shape, although they're very different. You'll see that with the architectural presentation that Richard has. We did tuck the buildings um, basically east towards the 600 building. We adjusted the parking area. We lost some parking spaces um, in this area here, um, which is essentially eight parking spaces. But since our count for the parking area is over, was over by um, basically 61 spaces, we are over by 53 spaces. So we are still more than adequately needing, uh, meeting our parking needs for the site. As far as drainage, the existing drainage systems are going to remain um, in place in the parking area and then also between the buildings. We have a lot of green space that will remain in effect between the uh, main walkway and the new 500 buildings. Sewer is going to, we have a pump station located in between the uh, main building and the 500 building, which is also basically the fire lane. This is a fire lane access. We've met with the fire chief and uh, that fire lane is going to remain um, almost exactly the same. Part of that fire lane, by the way, is an easement that is, is, uh, works back out to Bowery Beach Road. Water is also going to remain the same. Um, we have water access that comes through here, and then we have a water line that actually serves the 600 building. Because of the fact that we are trading 12 rooms for 12 rooms, we don't see an increase in traffic water usage or sewer um, or electrical needs. This building is actually should be more energy efficient. Um, we're, we're essentially not upgrading any of those utilities at this time. This is a, a better blow up partial plan of what we have, uh, again, for the 500 building, showing the fire lane, showing the sewer pumping station, and then showing the adjusted walkway. We are removing um, a few trees, uh, one of them in the existing island, and then there's a couple uh, between the buildings, and then we're going to be replacing with that. You see how the landscaping plan in the package. Landscaping in general is going to remain um, basically um, in effect the same as, uh, or in keeping with the, what we have in existing, um, for the existing property. So, and we are replacing a tree in that island. Lighting, we are keeping the existing lights for the parking area. We are going to do a resurface of the parking area. This is most likely going to be the staging area since building 600 will be shut down. Um, obviously, 500, the 500 buildings will be demolished, but 600 will be shut down during construction. And we are going to basically add some building mounted lights. There's some under, uh, some down lights that are underneath some porches and walkways in the 600 building. That's going to be the same here, but we are going to add some walkway bollards, which are also down lights that are path lighting. And you, I think you saw that in the package also. And you can see the bulk of landscaping that we have here with a bunch of, again, we're keeping this green space and we have a bunch of plantings even within, in between the buildings, that's a tight space. We still wanted to be able to um, use the plants as some um, um, working with the irrigation and the stormwater system. We are also demolishing, there is an existing shed that's in this location, uh, actually in this location here, and that shed is going to be removed. And that's one of the areas where we're able to pick up um, some of that impervious. Forgive me. Go back a little bit more. And I will...
turn the presentation, presentation over to Richard. He can walk you through some of the um, um, building and architectural elements, and then we can take questions afterwards. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Richard Lowe, Project Architects with Captain Thompson Architects. We have uh, made um, quite a lot of uh, uh, attention on the proposed buildings to keep the scale of the new buildings and their form um, relatively small and in keeping with the existing main inn. The concept is to have the appearance of three separate cottages, which is quite similar to the existing buildings. One departure from the existing buildings is that we are arranging the new units in two floors instead of three. And the uh, scale of the structure will remain uh, cottage-like with pitched roofs and um, double-hung windows, exterior porches, the overall treatment is intended to be more similar to the existing inn and we want to keep the existing style of uh, details, materials consistent with the rest of the campus. We have uh, typical materials being painted wooden shingles, wooden trim, double-hung windows, wood decks, and the building is characterized by the sloping roofs, bay windows, generous porches facing the water, and entry porches facing the car park. The first elevation is facing the, the green in the center of the space, and you can see the uh, porches for the units facing that direction. The next elevation faces the east and the car park area, and you can see the entry porches to the units themselves. If we look at the first floor plan, you can see again the intention to create three separate cottages where we have the units in pairs. There's a very typical uh, unit style for most of the, the units uh, and we have a large unit facing the water. All the units have two bedrooms. All the units have their entry from the east or the car park side. Um, and uh, the exterior porches on the water side. We have um, just two fireplaces in the uh, uh, units on uh, this end of the site. And so we, you might have noticed on the elevations that the uh, there were chimneys on just one of the buildings. The second floor is very similar. It's a virtual identical layout, the same entry porches, waterside porches, two bedrooms per unit. We have a roof plan. The roof plan um, emphasizes the three cottage style. Uh, you can see there's uh, one chimney element providing some character at that southernmost part of the building. And we have some uh, 
options for solar PVs and water catchment using the central uh, roof well of the middle building. The structures are primarily two floors above grade and one basement under the middle building. That basement will be used for back of house storage of linens and so on with access from a, a one-story structure that links those two cottages. So again, this is a view from the uh, southwest. So we're at the um, looking across the central green. You can see the three cottages strongly emphasized by their roof form, the typical units with their exterior porches facing the water. Here is the southernmost pair of units which are slightly larger than the others. They have the addition of the two fireplaces and the chimney element, but otherwise they have very similar features. The building is characterized by the wood shingles, the painted trim, double hung windows, uh, balustrade, gables, sloping roofs, which all are part of the existing main inn building and the existing 600 building. I think that I'll leave my comments at that. Great. That's essentially our presentation, so we're happy to take any questions from there. OK, thank you. Um, at this point, the public has an opportunity to comment. Um, I'm not sure any members of the public are here. Um, okay, then we will close the public uh, part of the uh, of the uh, hearing and open the to the board to discuss, ask questions of the applicant. Okay, there being no questions as such. Um, we will be deciding tonight on completeness. Um, I wanted to raise the question of a site viewing. Doesn't We can do find completeness and do the site viewing after, certainly, but I just wanted to get that out on the table now. Uh, do people, are people inclined to do a site viewing? My own feeling, and this is, could go either way, I guess, is that because this is a very high profile project on a very high profile property, um, it would probably make sense to have one, but um, I think I think that's a good point. I mean, I think my guess is that most of the members of the board probably have been there enough times they don't need it, but it might be good to have it as a public option. People happy with that? Okay. Uh, well, let's um, let's do our vote on um, completeness and. Uh, tabling to the um, June 16th meeting for the public hearing on the application itself. So, is, is that? One motion and then the next. Two uh, separate pardon? motion. I would do one motion and then do the second motion. Oh, no, for sure. But is, is, was that the, uh, that was the scheme you had in mind here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, would anybody care to make a motion? Henry. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Inn by the Sea LLC to replace the 12 unit, quote, 500 building, unquote, to the new 12 unit building located at 40 Bowery Beach Road be deemed complete. Second. Okay, we have a motion seconded. Any discussion? Call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Um, the next, I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, before you tabled it, I did want to raise one item for the board to provide comment to the applicant. Sorry. Uh, can you bring up the elevation that faces Route 77? Okay. 
the only thing I wanted the board to, to know is that this is the building that we used to at A7 right here. And most of the building is far back from the road. You can't see much of it at all. But I did note on the site plan that the portion that the main building basically blocks from here over. So this is the view for 177. And I just want to make sure the board was aware of that. And if I did not represent that correctly, I hope the applicant corrects me. No, that's correct. And it is quite some distance from Route 77. You might have a better idea about that distance. Yeah, the only, the only other thing that I wanted to mention is that um, there's basically some mature landscaping, some large trees out here. And then, of course, you have the innkeeper's building. You have some landscaping here. And then, of course, you have this other building cool so tower. so the view corridor <laughs> that we're really looking at and you can see the edge of the building that Maureen was just talking about essentially to the new building is a very limited view to that side of the building that's a view towards south south sort of the I guess the wooded area before it Correct. The ocean in the background. That's correct. Yeah, this is, yes, this is looking south. And then obviously, so here's north. The plan is facing north. And then you have the, the west to the green and then the east of the parking area. I'll be sure to note that when I drive by 45 miles. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly something to note on the site. <laughs> how good is the view now? Um, how good is the view? view now of that corridor? From 500? Yeah. You mean the view from the road? Well, no, the view the from building. the road looking in that it's, same direction. It's very similar. Uh, yeah. The 500 building is changing, but the surrounding. The uh, screening buildings and landscape, if you like, are not being changed. The scope of work is in the center of the site in terms of buildings and work? this area in terms of car parking. Can we go to that aerial photo? Yes. This aerial is taken from the south again. There you can see Bowery Beach Road, the innkeeper's building. This is the uh, utility building. The main inn building stops about here. The existing 500 building, you can see just begins to, to poke beyond the east end of the existing inn building. The new 500 building will protrude a little further to the east, but otherwise has the same screening. And uh, we do show on our floor plan the extent of the existing buildings. Everybody happy with the... Uh Yep. Resolution on issue. Okay. Um, let's do our second vote and then talk about a, a, a sign. Pardon me? Might we have to do the site walk before we table it? Yeah, you should, you should really do everything you want to talk about. Before oh, before you table Okay, it. Uh, good, good point. Site walk. Um, do any do people have any favored or unavailable dates? I would ask that you avoid Saturday mornings. Yeah, please. I would also ask that. Um, it's in the past. It's worked out kind of nicely for uh, early Friday morning. Does that work for people? What um, Friday are you thinking of? Well, we have the 22nd coming up, and we have the 29th after that. Um, 20 seconds a little close. It is. How about the, uh, the May 29th? Does that work for people? What time? Uh, uh, early is better for me, I think, oh, for uh, <laughs> 8 o'clock. Is that too early would, for I would like to see 7.30. Okay. What? I do You're, <laughs> You're talking, we're in my busy season, so right. I need okay. to be to work, and I'm supposed to be to work at 8, so... The less time I can be away from work, the better. Can the board handle 730? 730. Okay, you folks uh, will have somebody available? Um, 
Uh, we can certainly do 7.30. I would, I would just caution the board that this is an active hotel and there'll be guests in their rooms at that time probably still asleep on vacation. So we just have mm -hmm. to be sensitive to that. But we can do 7.30. From that perspective, I could defer. <laughs> but because somebody doesn't want to get up, that's not. You know, uh, I, I would defer to the. To I think we would promise to be very quiet and very inobtrusive if that's okay. And I don't think we'll have to be milling about the inside the buildings or you know it can be done uh, but we will be outside people's rooms right but talking softly and standing as far from the building as possible i i, I hear you and definitely get it we'll, well we'll go with whatever the board recommends but i just i just ask you to be cognizant of that no point well taken okay let's uh let's make it um friday may 29th at 7 30 a.m Okay. Uh, Where are we going to meet? In the lobby or in the parking lot? In the parking lot? Parking lot in front of the I would say in the east parking lot. Okay. okay. Which one's that? <laughs> the one closest in Weather front permitting. of the building. Yeah, in front, in front of the building. If, uh, does anybody have any other issues regarding this particular application? If not, I think it would be appropriate to... Uh, Table it to the June meeting. Do I hear a motion to that effect? Mr. Chairman, can I just yes, make sir. one quick comment? I just wanted to thank uh, Maureen and Ben and the fire chief for working with us. Um, it's been a lot of work for our team to get our heads around the different zoning constraints on the site, and we've really appreciated the cooperation from the town's offices um, to help us get through this. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for that recognition of the staff. They worked very hard. Uh, would anybody care to make a motion? Caroline. Be it ordered that the above application be tabled to the regular June 16, 2015 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. Joe seconded. Uh, any discussion on the second motion? All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. So we'll see you folks uh, a week from Friday and then uh, on June 16th. Thank you very much. Um, okay, we have two additional items, well, one additional item of business, which uh, we've been over many times before. That's the Special Event Facility Overlay District Zoning Amendment. So nice. Yes, it is. Uh, we have the latest uh, draft before us, which I think Maureen has uh, used to input all of our prior comments. And I believe what we will want to do is to uh, make sure we've got it all straight and then um, set up a public hearing to uh, get the public input and then before it's referred to back to the uh, town council. Any comments, discussions? Uh, do you want to go page by page? Uh, What were the major changes you made, Marie? Just adding number four and the performance standards? I'd, I'd say the major change is uh, no map amendment is proposed with this. Uh, the map amendment was originally intended to move the Wentworth Lodge closer towards compliance with the current ordinance requirements. I contacted the uh, representatives of the property owner, and they were not comfortable at this time, including that map amendment. So um, if I've learned anything, is showing people's property on maps. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I mean, the board does not need the property owner's permission to move forward with map amendment. I'm suggesting that you not go ahead with it if the applicant isn't interested. Um, what that means is that if you go ahead and if you move this ahead in June to the council, and at that time someone decides they want to do a map amendment, that's got to get it kicked back to the planning board. So. Um, with that, you know, it's, it's basically the same thing you've been discussing. There's a definition of special event facility. There's a creation of something called a special event facility overlay district. It's very similar to the structure we use with telecommunication towers. You have to apply to have the district apply to your property. You have to go to the council for that. The planning board has to provide input to the council before they can act. 
and then um, if you get designated a special event facility overlay district, you still need to get site plan review before you can open your special event facility. And to go along with the standards that are available under site plan review, there are also some special standards that have been created just for, for special event facilities. The procedure is the same as site plan review with one exception. A couple exceptions. One is you have two sets of submission requirements. The other one is that if you get site plan approval under this, your site plan approval is not good forever. It's only good for three years. Um, and there are some provisions that you've asked for limiting the number of events to 12, um, ex not to exceed 275 attendees, no amplification of music outside of 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, uh, an event shall not exceed eight hours in duration during a 24-hour period. Uh, we've added a provision that says that where any portion of the special event facility is within a structure, it has to comply with the applicable building codes. And we put it that way because if the structure is a, a, a bathroom, there's a different building code than if the structure is a cooking facility. Um, and then it does say that the planning board can re require additional re um, provisions in order to mitigate the uh, impact on the abutting properties. I, I do want to let the board know that I believe it was in January um, you had asked the council to provide you with more input on what their intent was. Um, they have put this on their agenda for next Tuesday night. So hopefully there will be some discussion and that can be brought back to you before you have your public hearing on June 16th if you decide to move this ahead tonight. Any comments or questions, Henry? I did have one question. Remember we discussed the number of people and we said, is this at one time or is it total that visited it or is it coming and going and how did we address that because I didn't find it when I'm looking at it. Uh, right now it says 275 and I believe the interpretation would be that any one time there would be no more than 275 attendees on the property. Did it say that? Sorry. It doesn't say that. It says 275 and I don't know how you would be able to enforce anything else because how would you know if more than 275 people have been there if they weren't there all at the same time? Unless you stamp them or put some people <laughs> with, you know, like on top of the head, like, you know. We, we already have restrictions on the number of people that can be uh, guests at a short-term rental, and we've expressed that restriction the same way we've expressed this restriction. If you think it'll work, then the rest of the board agree with you. I, I think one of the, I think what we can rest easy on that is that a, an event is defined as something that shall not exceed eight hours in duration. And therefore, there are only 275 people that are allowed at that one event. So I, I think that. But if 10 people come and 10 people, if 10 people go, then there's room for another 10. So you're saying that the, there's going to be numerous events? Well, you're held defining it as an event that starts and ends and everybody's going to be there, but it could be a moving event like a charity thing where people are turning up. I know charities are excited, but you could be turning up and going and coming along for one particular thing and then they go out and there's room for 10 more people. But the, okay, but That's why 275 at any one time, in my estimation, was a better definition. That's all. But I think it's. The rest of the board. I think a special event. Um, I mean, to me, that's read as 275 people attendees per event. So, is a concern from. Uh, is a concern that someone's going to hold their 12 events in one no, single I mean, day? Well, no, no, no. It's one event. But I mean, I turn up at the event, and you turn up 10 minutes after me. You can't get in because 275 are already in there. And I say, you know, I'm tired. I'm going home. You can come in after me, or at that would not exceed 275 at any given time. Henry, I think the problem is you can sort of have an enforcement problem unless somebody's standing there with, you, with, you, with, with the counter. I agree 275 anyway, but you go and count them all. I mean, it's well, just, it's an honor basis, I guess. No, you. Well, Ben can show up and count noses at any one moment, but if you're going to keep track for the entire duration of the eight hours and keep a running, t I, I think that's probably well, you know. green. When we had this discussion with the short-term rentals, uh, we understood that uh, a lot of the enforcement would happen if complaints were made. 
And with the short-term rentals, if you're on a lot of less than 30,000 square feet, you have a limit on the number of guests you can have on the property. And the intent was that if a complaint is made, typically the police department responds. We had asked the police department, when you respond, could you try to take a head count? So I see the same thing happening in this type of situation. If you have an event that has gotten out of hand and it generates a complaint and the police arrive and it's obvious that there's more than 275 people, then you have violation. Many of those fit into an airplane, I guess. I mean, I just think, it, I just think putting that number on it is, you know, we've shown to a degree how difficult it is to enforce. So and it, how difficult it is to define. That's basically it. So what number do you want to put on it, Henry? Oh, I'm quite happy with 275, okay. but I would just like at any given time added, that's all. Hmm. I mean, like, you know, English being my language, but then, you know. Uh, any expression of support or not for Henry's proposal? A comment. I guess oh, if I were inclined to define it, I would say 275 per event, not at any given time. So. Well, that's different. That makes it different, right? I mean, yes, I agree. That is a limit, a hard limit of 275 full stop. Per event. Yeah. Per, in the eight hour period or whatever period we have for the event, the total number of participants would be 275. Not. Yeah, the only way you're ever going to measure is at any one time. You know, you got, you're not going to keep track of the comings and goings and so no, on. But I wouldn't want to say I wouldn't want to say at any one time because right. that that implies much more traffic at the event um, than you, a 275 per event would imply. So if, if we were if we felt the need to define it, I wouldn't say at any one time. Although in fact when somebody goes out and monitors it, unless you have them staying for the full course of the event, uh, it may be difficult to, to determine. But I think the intent, in my mind, is per event. Well, can we get an inf informal reaction? My sense would be to leave it as it now reads, and Henry would like That's to... That's fine with me. Uh, I'll withdraw it. I'll withdraw it. I'm fine right. with how it's read. I think it's defined. Victoria, John? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let, let, let's, let, let's leave it I withdraw the comments. Okay. Uh, any other ideas or comments? Elaine? I guess I just wanted to um, make a comment about Maureen's statement that there is no map amendment that goes with this. And to say that the only reason that we're doing this is our understanding that there is at least one member of the public that wants this to happen. And I think it should be very clear that this is not a planning board initiative, that this is something that was brought to the planning board because the town council requested that the planning board look at it because there had been one or more property owners who were interested in doing this. So if it comes back to the time when we are in a position of having to recommend this to the town council, if there are no property owners willing to stand up and say, yes, I want to do this, I would vote I would recommend to the town council that they not take action because I see no point in doing this unless there are members of the public who are willing to say we want this. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, if, if the Spray Corporation does not want to get involved in, in this and they were the people who had the interest initially, I'm not sure why we we're doing this at all. Exactly. Uh, it becomes sort of an abstract exercise and what ifs and I, I just don't think that's our what we ought to be doing. Right. But that being said, I think it's time to move it to a public hearing. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, because if they come back in tomorrow and say, okay, we're all set. Uh, I have one thing, and I, I think I may be the only person who has an interest in this change, but on page seven, the additional requirements, which um, does, I, my own sense is it ought to do a little bit more, and I know Maureen is nervous about this because it, takes too heavy a hand, but in a nutshell, I would like the board to have the power to uh, apply uh, reasonable restrictions, including those with respect to the um, event scope limitations above, if we think it's necessary in the public interest. So if we find a 15-acre site and all the, all the rest of it, and we think this site simply 
cannot handle 275 attendees without you know adversely impa impacting the neighborhood, I think we ought to have the ability to reduce the number. Um, it sounds like a blank check on the control issue, and if we got pushback on it, whether well, we get pushback, but I just think this is such an unusual um, thing to permit in a residential district. Caroline? So how does number four not cover that? Um, could, where it says operation on line 37, we could say the operation or scope of a special event. And that would certainly be a shorthand way to do it, yeah. I mean, this to me talks about other restrictions that we could apply that, you know, aren't, mm -hmm. uh, aren't in the laundry list, which is, is, I think is, you know, definitely something we should have. I would like us to be able to amend the laundry list as well because um, I, I think all doubts have to be in, uh, resolved in favor of the public interest in a residential district where, you know, you're going to have this kind of event stuff going on as essentially a commercial use. Marie? When I wrote operation of a special event facility, it was my intent to include the size of the event. Um, but if you want me to say size or scope, including but not limited operation, including but not limited to the size of the event. Well, I would just say including and limited to the uh, event scope set forth above. Mm -hmm. Can I bring up a hypothetical? Sure. <laughs> we have this nice site. It's great. Everything's wonderful. Problem is, not a problem, but there's a, there's a small lake in the middle of it or a pond, and I've got youngsters turning up. Can we deem this is unsuitable for youngsters because there's a possibility they could fall in the lake or in the water and drown? I mean, surely you, this, this is opening up a can of, word, a can of worms if you try and define that in... We didn't say anything about insurance, by the way. I don't think that it's covered by, and we're not vulnerable, therefore, to some problems to do with insurance. I mean, suitability of a suitability of a, a site. How do we define that? I mean, we're not opening up um, an enormous problem with that. It's undeveloped. It's just a piece of ground. How do you define its suitability? I just a question. We're not there. Can I say two things? One, children should be supervised, and I don't care what your event is. Something could happen to somebody if they're not careful. And two, I don't know if we want to go to the root of requiring liability insurance. Sure, but that's I think that's something that if somebody is operating the business, they will soon learn they must carry. Well, I agree with you, but what I'm trying to say is that we, we said suitability. There where are certain we, things that are outside that? our purview. I that, thought we said, so. you know, additional requirement. Well, that's what I thought we were talking about, yeah. suitability. The operating facility related to the lot. Are we We're not, talking about noise? No, I'm just saying about how can we define that this particular site is not okay for what we want to do, or what they want to do. But our standard is impact on the surrounding neighborhood. It has nothing to do with suitability of the site, it's impact on the neighborhood. We, we look at land use. I mean, we don't look, at, for example, we don't look at whether it's economically viable. Those, there are many, many issues that would relate to a special event facility that the town would not get involved in because our focus is in land use. Is this an appropriate activity in this area? Is, are well, they, we are they, are, we define it by looking at all of the site plan standards and the additional standards that you have created. So the site plan standards are the typical standards. We look at traffic, we look at subsurface wastewater disposal, we look at utilities, we look at landscaping. And then in addition, we have these performance standards that give very specific standards related to this specific activity. But there's all kinds of things that relate to a special event facility that we wouldn't get involved in. For example, with the short-term rentals, we didn't require that they carry liability insurance. Um, no, we looked at some building code requirements. We looked at suitability to fit in the neighborhood because we're, we're focusing on the land use. 
Yeah, I mean, Henry, I took you, your point to be one of public safety, um, which we do consider in the context of traffic flow, you know, crosswalks, sidewalks, all that kind of thing. But I mean, if, if a subdivision came in and was going to have a duck pond on somewhere in the subdivision, I'm not sure we'd require a you know eight foot fence around the duck pond so the kids wouldn't fall in. It just I think that you know your example, if that's the kind of thing you're worried about, is something that usually is just outside the scope of our um, wow. attention. Reasonable restrictions on the operation. Of the, you know, you're saying. Reasonable restrictions are purely to do with land use. And maybe we should, well, you know, that's, that's okay, I guess, if you accept that as a definition of But, you know, reading between the lines, I'm just saying you could end up with a, a piece of ground that looks perfectly okay, which ends up with some problems and doesn't, I think, reflect well on this piece of paper if, if that happens. Well, I'll tell you, why don't we, your, why don't we ponder your point, uh, we, right now we want to get this thing set up. For yeah, that's care. fine, that's fine. Yeah. And you know, yeah. I, th I think keeping Elaine's point in, in mind that we'll have our public hearing, we'll get the text where we're comfortable with it, and then we'll figure out whether or not to... Yeah, I agree that they should it. have liability, obviously, maybe, you know, that's something else in time. Would somebody care to make a motion to uh, put this thing into a public hearing? I will. Caroline? Be in order that based on materials prepared and the facts presented, the planning board tables the special event facility overlay district amendment to the June 16, 2015 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Is there a second? Joe? Any, we have a seconded motion. Is there any discussion on the second motion? Uh, call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Um, there is one last opportunity for public comment. There are no <laughs> members of the public present. We'll close that. And, uh, I make a motion we adjourn. Cheerfully seconded in favor. <laughs> We're out of here.